Welcome everybody. Hi. It's good to see you. Again, we're going to do two videos back to back. Try to keep them around 30 minutes or so. So this will be part four today. We're talking about the God of Breakthrough and Restoration. I have my beautiful wife with me again. Hello. All right. So today in part four, what we're going to discuss is going to be really interesting, but we're going to deal with territorial warfare. So last time we dealt with generational, before that we dealt with some battlegrounds with rejection and like things that we've had to deal with with gossip and that pretty much every minister's had to deal with. And then before that we dealt with personal struggles. So it's just giving you some testimonies of things we've been through and what we learned and I'm hoping it'll help people that watch these. Yeah. So in this one we're going to talk about some battles that we've went through pastoring a church. <clears throat> with spiritual forces of wickedness in the region and then things that we've had to deal with in the church with difficult situations that have come up. Yes. We've had a few of those. Yes. But we're not unique. There's probably not a minister that's anointed that's going after God for a move of the Holy Spirit and souls that has not had some battles in his church. That's, that's right. yeah. I, I don't know of one that hasn't. So we're definitely not unique in that way, but just to share some things we learned. So let's pray, Lord. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing on this and everything said that needs to be said. It will be under the anointing. It will be powerful. We bind the enemy. He goes from us now in Jesus' name. But we thank you for this being an effective time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to open with a few scriptures. One of them is Matthew 24, 12. And this is a great warning for all of us. It says, because of the increase of wickedness that we're seeing in these last days, right. that the love of many would grow cold. That's a big danger for all of us. We've got to be careful that we forgive people, that we don't let the things that we go through harden our hearts and cause us to get to where we don't care about people like we should. And right. we've been hardened. We need to make sure that our love does not grow cold. That's a warning. And then also Ephesians 6, 12, it says a very common scripture. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in the heavenly places, high places. So that's over cities and regions and nations. There are territorial spirits. So let me share a few things real quickly. Uh, without doing a big teaching on this, principality is the word in Greek comes from a word like arche. Um, and it implies like almost like an, we get the word architect, but they have boundaries. So wherever this principality, there's, they're all over the place, but it'll definitely have a boundary of where it's over and kind of like an architectural mind of blueprints, it will strategize, it'll study its territory and create almost like schematics or a blueprint if you will of strategy of what is a threat to his to Satan's kingdom and it will zero in on those threats yeah. yeah okay so if a church is going to be a powerful book of Acts true church that they have a powerful prayer ministry there is a, a strong move of the Holy Spirit in their midst. The gifts are in operation. Um, they preach the truth. I mean, they, they preach it straight. And they preach the whole counsel of God and all that. And they're, they're a real Book of Acts, biblical church. Then they're a threat. And especially if they're going to go after a move of God and go after souls. If they're wanting to see people get saved in the region, then they're a threat. Right, right. And so there's no doubt that the principalities and powers of that respective region is going to look down and find those type of places and try to zero in on them okay if it's a lukewarm place if it's just a denominational um, traditions of men uh, pet yeah. doctrines like yeah. an older traditional type thing where it's inside the four walls and it's not it's not really a threat they're not interested in winning souls they're just it's just an older established type thing uh, Satan isn't overly concerned with that or if it's like a lot of the modern like I'm not against the modern we, we love the modern but like the modern type of where it's just a social club it's entertainment it's programs 
Um, there's no real move of the Holy Ghost. If God even starts to move in any little bit, they stick it in the back room somewhere. The, the enemy is not threatened by that. And so he's not going to target those type of things. But if you're going to see a move of God and souls and you're really going to go for it, you're going to read the book of Acts and you're, you're believing God to see that, then you're going to have to face it. All right, so let me just share a few things that we've had to go through, but also in our region. Let me start with the region because what we've gone through is not just us. So around 2004 or 5, when my wife and I, uh, we got married in 2005. So before that, I had the great honor of uh, being one of the ones that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Steve Hill had started a church here and he was an incredible man of God. He's since gone home to be with the Lord. I believe in 2014 or 16 he passed away. But he was, he was just such a man of God. And I, I felt drawn to it. I live pretty far away. But me and two others were those that he had prayed over and kind of sent us out to represent him. And me in the east part of the Metroplex, because he was over by, if you know DFW, he was over by the airport. So he sent me out eastward and I was over here more in the rock wall, um, Garland, Mesquite type of area. And we were doing a lot of street evangelism. And so I, I had a great honor. I was able to spend some time with him. He was just a really, really kind individual. And he had a real heart for souls. He had a real heart for young ministers. And whenever it was just him and I, and we were able to spend some time together and I'd ask him questions, all this, I really saw his heart for people you know he wasn't he wasn't like a real real uptight religious type person that some may think when they hear the hellfire brimstone type of sermons he did at brownsville which that needed to be preached but actually he was actually a very kind person and he had a heart for for people to get saved and had a heart for hurting people to be healed and he was a really kind person and I, I believe that he really genuinely had a heart. Back then I was pretty young. He had, a, he had such a heart for young ministers to invest in them. He, he talked to me a lot about that. But anyway, um, so whenever he came to the area, this would have been 2003 and four, and I was real active with this ministry. I was doing stuff. We even went um, to another country, me and a group, representing him there and it was it was a powerful move of God. So while that's going on, here's what started happening in the region. We had all these people feeling that God was wanting to move. And there was a there was a prophecies and I believe they were true, but they felt that God wanted to really do something significant. And so people started talking about redigging the wells of revival. And people started moving to the area. Several big name ministries relocated to this area and moved their ministry here, moved, moved their family here. And everybody was in anticipation of this revival that was gonna come. And we, I was right in the middle of all this. I mean, we had had 40 days of prayer and fasting and there was a group of us that from different ministries coming together uh, and Christ for the Nations, we were using their facility for all of it, but we were really expecting a move of God. And I believe that God, God had that intention. But maybe, I was quite young, I don't really know for sure, but I don't know if people maybe underestimated some things with the enemy or not. But I do know, let me just tell you the, out, the long term, because that was 2004. It was before we were married and all that so this was back when it was just me and I was I was a part of all that was going on I was kind of there in the middle from that time till 2024 I can look back and see how this played out but here's what happened it seemed like to me that the principalities and powers of the region really rose up in protest against that and sadly there was a tremendous spiritual warfare that came against churches and ministries and I saw because back then Dallas was still seeing a lot of churches that were seeing a move of God back then there was still a lot of places you could go that would have anointed speakers come in they would have revivals in their church over a period of time uh, they were praying for the sick they were 
believe in God to deliver people. You know, it was it was really good. There was still powerful things going on, but those churches began to be targeted. And over time, uh, with sadness in my heart, I say that they systematically something would happen in the church where there was a split or a destruction of some kind, and they ended up the church would close its doors because so many people left or whatever, or leadership's families got struck by an attack, false accusation, whatever happened, they would end up leaving and, and the ministry was shut down that way or whatever. I mean, it was one thing after the other. It was just systematically and over time. And another thing, I saw some of them that used to really be revival churches that decided maybe because their godly pastor got older and he felt like he couldn't do it anymore and he'd pass it to the next generation or something but I saw churches moving away from the move of God and moving more into a seeker sensitive type model and so they lost the revival that way and so we watched as many of our peers began to just leave their area people moved away from the area churches shut down people got out of the ministry or whatever and it was the craziest thing. I mean, here we were right at the cusp of a major move of God and something just slammed. And I, we saw this systematically happening over time. And it was so sad to see the level of spiritual warfare that took place. So in that, around 2011, we were going along pretty good and starting to grow even more and see more than what we were seeing, but we got hit just like everybody else. And I know that I had someone that became like a Judas to me that I'd poured my life into him for many years. And of course he ended up causing a church split, taking people with him. Um, and then other people, just it just spread to the next, the next, the next. And, and it, it was very destructive. And there was even a, a I, wanna, I don't wanna say too much, but there was even someone that was like in the ministry that kind of um, was supportive of their agenda. And so that fueled the fire tremendously. So we dealt with a great loss there and Satan's intent was that we shut our doors permanently as a church and cease to exist. That was Satan's agenda. Just like he did everywhere, he was trying to shut us down completely. And I would say it was only by the grace of God that it didn't work because we had lost so many people and went through so much. And I think that one of the reasons it didn't work, and I'm gonna share this in just a moment. So without going into some big long thing, back when I was young in the Lord as a baby Christian, uh, I was at this particular church where I was helping with the youth and God was really moving in my life, even though I was still dealing with uh, personal struggles I shared in the first video, that was, a side issue that was going on for sure but but yet God was really moving in my life with great personal revival though he was drawing me deep into prayer and I was I was really praying to go deeper in him and 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 one of the things I talked to a man of God that had prayed for me and, and I asked him Do you have any advice and he said learn how to pray so I began to go really deep in prayer I was getting whatever I need to do done as quickly as I could so I could go into the church sanctuary which had a key and I would just I would spend hours in prayer and reading the word well in that there was these two elderly women there named Ruby and Addie and they were intercessors of this church now let me explain intercessors because I don't think probably the overwhelming majority of people watching this anymore unfortunately are going to know what I'm even talking about mm -hmm. so there used to be um, powerful men and women but especially it seemed to be more women than men that God gave them like a special grace and they they had a special gift if you will to go deep in prayer and they would go up to the church on their own or maybe when the Holy Spirit started moving in a church they would find a place and they knew how to get under the anointing and get in the spirit and groan and travail and pray in tongues and pray until the Holy Spirit used them to pray things all the way through. And they, they were the ones that were the powerhouse of the church. They always were. And so this was really common from Azusa Street 
all the way until I don't know a decade or more ago it started just disappearing completely yeah well Ruby and Addie prayed they you know they loved me but Addie was like uh, like a grandma to me and you know it's like I could do no wrong she just she just adored me and she'd take me to see Rodney Howard Brown meetings and all this but Addie loved me too but Addie was a little more like boy you you need to straighten up you know she was more the corrector which was awesome because I really needed that too I needed both and they they were wonderful in my life but they they pray over me I'll lay hands and pray over me a lot and they taught me how to pray they taught me the importance of prayer they took me to revival meetings uh, they were really influential in my life well that was back in the 90s so now fast forward to 2011 so I, I've just gone through this major betrayal and I was ministering to the people that were left after all of this and I was thinking to myself while I'm preaching you know on the inside I was thinking I wouldn't wish this on a snake why am I still in this thing I could do something else with my life you know this is I just was not a good place mentally emotionally or even spiritually because I'd been so hurt and uh, I was still preaching though and as I was going through praying for people just the grace of God here as I was going through praying people were still getting hit by the power of God and touched you know and but in my mind I'm just praying for them but in my mind I'm thinking I need to find something else to do you know I, I'm tired of all the garbage and I get to my daughter Brianna who we talked about and I'm going through this praying and she's always been really sensitive to the Holy Spirit but I mean she got hit really hard and I mean she was thrown back in the air laying on her back and when she hit the ground I heard come out of her what I can only describe as what sounded exactly like Ruby and Addie I mean exactly like them and I remember thinking to myself man I haven't heard those sounds in years you know and I remember that later on, like 2018, when John Davis would come minister for us and the Holy Spirit would move and the intercessors would get under that anointing and be praying in the Spirit, he used to just stand there and tell me this. He would say, the sounds of revival right here, the sounds of revival. But that's those intercessors that know how to pray things through. Well, it started right after I went through all of that, that God imparted that, if you will, into Brianna and then it seemed to just kind of begin to spread to others and what happened was was that God birthed a really powerful intercessory ministry and I do believe it was the intercessors that helped keep us afloat because we came through at the other side and God began to restore and there was two other things I would say we continued to take communion together as a church and I would speak blessings over the church not only to them publicly, but even when nobody was around, I'd walk through and speak blessings. I think that had something to do with it as well. We organized prayer and fasting with those that remained. So prayer was really the key. But also, I would say Benny Baker, but he came in 2011. Yeah. It's right after all of that. Yeah. And I have, I'm dear friends with Paul and Darla Mills, and it's a sweet, wonderful family. But they had, they had, had him come minister for them long and short of it he came for the first time to minister for us but he he's such a prophetic individual I mean I didn't tell him anything and he the things he was preaching the things he was saying to us was so spot on and brought so much healing yeah. and I saw God really use him to people were delivered of things and healed physical miracles and God just really used him to help during that time to bring help bring healing to the church so anyway, um, I just want to say that don't take lightly the territorial warfare that is out there because it's no joke, but the way that it will try to come will be through uh, either Christians or some type of tear among the wheat, some type of an infiltration of people that Satan can use. And they are the types that when it's time for Satan to move, they're going to be his own mouthpiece of lies and slander and gossip and trying to create rebellion against the pastor and so discord among the brethren. Uh, they're the ones that are useful to him. And so I learned through that 
that I do this all the time now. I walk through the church and I'm praying to north, south, east, and west, God bring in the right people. But I walk through the church and I pray, Lord, keep out the wrong people. We want the right people to come. Right. But the Jezebels and the Judases and those, those that cause yeah. problems, here's what I pray. And I hope that anybody in the ministry will remember this. I walk through there and pray, Lord, you know the wrong people that don't need to be here that cause problems and heartache and destroy churches. You know, Lord, get rid of them. Don't let them come in the first place, but if they do come to a service, here's what I pray. Don't let them get their roots down. Don't let them get entangled in anybody's life. Develop one deep, meaningful relationship. But rather, your angels will cause them to be exposed for who they are and will be just cleared out. They won't be able to cause a problem. They won't be able to take anybody with them. They're just gone. It's as though they were never here. Right. And since I've been doing that, there's been a few people through the years since 2011 till now, there's been a few people that came in and the Lord just got rid of them. They, right. were, not, they were not able to cause one problem and they weren't able to take anybody with them. They were just gone. Yeah. So pray that way because it's hard to deal with those type of people. Because even if you try to correct them, they're going to turn it back on you that you're the problem and they're not, you know. Yeah. So the best way to deal with them is to pray them out. Pray now before they ever come. Pray that they don't even come. Right. But unfortunately, it seems like some still find it's their still, way in. Yeah. But anyway, just pray them out. Instead of fighting them out, pray them out. Right. And God will get rid of them and it'll, it will prevent a lot of heartache. Yeah. So territorial warfare comes from the through Satan's fifth column the tares among the wheat that Satan sows the accuser the destroyer but what we learn from from this is two things I want to share before we close out one is we learn to really forgive people from our hearts and let it go and commit everything to prayer these these type of people go out and they slander you they, they make you sound like some type of mix between Charles Manson and Hitler. Okay, they make you out to be the most evil person. They're, they're gossiping. They get everybody they can to hate you and all that. Don't go fighting with them and trying to defend yourself. Because see, that's the reaction that anybody would normally have. Right. But don't do all of that. And don't try to destroy them. They're trying to destroy you. But you don't try to destroy them because who's the destroyer? Satan. Yes. If Satan's going to use them, hey, that's their problem. But he's not going to use me. I'm not going to try to destroy any of them. Right. And so awesome. learn to forgive them. Yeah. Lord, I bless them to become yes. what Jesus wants them to be. We forgive them. We ask you to forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And, and ask God to intervene and God to defend you. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And whatsoever a man sows, that we also reap. So we need to learn that we sow forgiveness and we let the Lord fight the battles. Yes. And so I, I didn't continue. Uh, at first I started to defend myself, but instead of continuing down that, I just let God fight the battles and God will do it. And every, every church that's seen a move of God uh, and, and been a threat, you can talk to the pastor there. They went through something like this. You know, it's just, unfortunately, that's how Satan attacks. So these are some things we learn to forgive and let God fight those battles. Because even if you're totally living a holy, pure life and doing everything right, there's still going to be people. Like think of Jesus being accused of stuff. What did Jesus ever do wrong? Not one single thing. Yet he had groups of people that hated him enough to want him dead. Yeah. And spread all kinds of lies about him. Okay. Our all enemies right. are his enemies. Yes. yes. All right. So the last thing I would say is um, I want to close with this. But dealing with something that... So... What people need to understand is that whenever we gather together in church, what you need to understand is, is that we kind of have this open doors. It's not like we gather together for church and it's invitation, invitation only. So anybody can kind of come. 
And so people need to be aware that you need to read that parable about where the landowner had an enemy come in and sowed tares among the wheat. And that's what's concerning. Let me take it from this angle. You think about Biden and his administration opened our borders. There's been 11 million people and the FBI has come out very publicly saying that they know for sure that terrorists have come in. So it's a threat to national security, not mean to get political, but it's just not wise. Well, in the same way, a lot of the modern church of today has opened their borders uh, in, a, in a not wise way. What I mean is this, that there's no requirement for somebody to be born again or repent of their sins or to adhere to the scriptures and live a godly life. I mean, they could be shacked up together. They, there could be a lot of things going on. There, and there's never going to be anything to confront that. Well, then they've got open borders where they've got some wheat there, but they've got tares. And so if the enemy ever wants to destroy that church, he's got a fifth column right in the middle of that church that he probably would have very little trouble destroying it. I mean, right. it'd be overnight. Right. Satan could just swoop in, put thoughts in those the minds of those people that aren't even Christians, by the way. And next thing you know, there's a whole military of Satan's little servants right there in the middle of that church, like a Trojan horse yeah. that can destroy it overnight. So we need to be aware, though, that if you're the type of church that's going to pray and really preach the truth uncompromisingly, and you're going to have a mighty move of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be going after souls, and you want to see people heal and deliver in Book of Acts Christianity, mm -hmm that one of Satan's tactics is he wants to sow in infiltrators into your church. Now, I've heard from credible sources that there's actually people in the, whether it be the LGBT community or maybe some other liberal groups that are actually wanting to send in infiltrators into Christian churches to try to indoctrinate them to be for their agendas, okay? now. I'll just let you look into that, but I've heard that from credible sources. But I do know for a fact that Satan does have people that are witches and people like that that will be sent into churches. If they know how to pretend to be a Christian, they can fit right in, they know the scriptures, and their job is to infiltrate that church and to bring destruction. So we need to be aware of infiltration. Now there was a time that back in the 80s into the 90s that there were several people that God had mightily used them. Some, a few of them are still around, but not very many, but God had really used them to write books and teach and, and minister in a way to expose these things, like these agendas, Satanism, the occult, and expose the agendas, like the tactics against churches, etc. And man, Satan really rose up against that. Yeah. He, so what Satan did was, he used the secular realm to try to make it sound like it's a conspiracy theory. And they started calling it satanic panic and they made fun of it. Well, law enforcement was very open and, and the whole time saying there's nothing about this that isn't real. Uh, we are, we're coming upon places where these things are happening. Um, this is not just some conspiracy theory. These things really are happening. We know that they are. And so it was just like anytime Satan wants to discredit something or silence it, it seems like he'll just try to make it out to be a conspiracy theory and make fun of it. Yeah. And then people want to just shy away right. from it because they don't want to be made fun of. Yeah. Oh, you're just you're a conspiracy theorist, you know. But th these things are going on. And not only that, but they were going on in the 80s and 90s. They're going on more today than back then. You see it in our culture to the degree that even openly, it's going on like at the Grammys. Yes. There's a, a very militant group called the Satanic Temple that's trying, you need to look into them if you're not aware of this, but they're trying to use our own laws in America, religious freedom, to promote Satanism, even targeting children in an after-school Satan club and trying to ritualize abortion to be a spiritual right that they can perform under, their, under our laws of religious freedom. 
So just look into this for yourself, yeah. that it's going on, it's mainstream now. Back in the 80s and 90s, it was they tried to keep it mm -hmm. secret, but it's getting more and more blatant. And the people that used to be used so powerfully to have testimonies and books written about it and real public about it, they were equipping the body of Christ, Satan rose up to discredit them. One of them had a best-selling book. He was, he was a comedian guy, a wonderful man of God. And they, a few people rose up just to begin to call him a liar and discredit him. And, and sadly, a lot of people believe. And then uh, the lady uh, that wrote you know, several books, she was a medical doctor. God used her powerfully to see over a thousand people come out of hardcore Satanism, give their lives to Jesus, be delivered. And powerful stories, powerful testimony. But yet Satan raised up some people to try to discredit her and her ministry and people just believed it went along with it they lost the support so what i'm saying is be careful what you're listening to because satan does not want to be exposed he does not want people writing books about it talking about it teaching churches how to recognize and then how to confront it right. how to defeat satan does not want you to know how to defeat him how to expose him and defeat him. And so he's been over the last couple of decades trying to silence those type of people. And I'm concerned that right now in 2024, a lot of those voices are no longer around. Many, some of them have gone home to be with the Lord. Others have been so attacked that they're just kind of silenced off to the side. Right. And it concerns me. So. We need to just be aware of these tactics. This is territorial warfare over your respective state, your region that you pastor, but also over the United States. There are principalities over this nation. And so we need to be aware and operate in the opposite spirit, if you will, of the prevailing prince. Like in our region, it's more of religious, and I would say religious witchcraft, like ungodly control, but it's a religious spirit. And so we have to operate in the opposite of a religious spirit and that religious witchcraft and, and be able to see a powerful move of God, okay? So let's get back to um, exposing the enemy and teaching people how to defeat the enemy because as Christians, we have authority over him and we have weapons of war. We should be walking in victory. And I may talk about this in the next one, but we should not be afraid of the enemy. Revelation 21 8 warns us, you know, these will end up in the lake of fire. The first one is the cowardly. Look it up. And the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. I don't understand all this fear that a lot of people have of the devil and demons and, and talking about these things. It, it's kind of, to be honest with you, it's kind of embarrassing that we as Christians would even act like we're afraid of the enemy like right. that. How does, when the world looks at us, they should see people that are, have a boldness yes. and a confidence in our God that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. We trample on yes. snakes and scorpions, overcome all the power of the enemy. We have authority. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. Yes. Okay, what we bind will be bound. What we loose will be loosed. Anyway, hopefully this has been a blessing to you guys. We're also going to make the last video where we're going to deal with some things about restoration. But God bless you. Thank you for joining us.